For years now, some people have been told in church how God is just all about you. Like he's there in heaven, fingers crossed, saying, oh, I just hope they pick me. I hope this killing of my son thing works out. I hope they like me. You know, some people imagine God saying, I just couldn't stand another day in heaven without them. You know, my love's got to be reckless. I got to just run them all down. And seeker-driven preachers present a weak, insecure God who's like a frantic bull in a china shop. He's just breaking everything and running around, just trying to get you. No, he lovingly, kindly predestined you to adoption as his child through Christ, not so that the glory and attention would be all on you and how you chose and how he just had to have you, but on him. If you're a true believer, you may be the recipient of saving grace, but you're not the reason for God's saving grace. It's all about his glory. His will in saving people is to bring glory and attention to himself. You needed saving because of original sin, and God had every right to leave you and I in our sin, dead and heading for hell. But he chose to save us. He chose to wake up our dead heart and open up our blind eyes. And so that reality should make us say, wow, The doctrine of election and God's will and salvation sometimes makes people say, you know, well, why hasn't he chosen to save my friend or why hasn't he saved my family member yet? But when we understand God's will and salvation biblically, I think we flip it and we begin to say with awe, why would you even save a sinner like me? What have I ever done to deserve your mercy? Jesus, thank you. Glory to God.